There's a hole in my modular where the new tone used to be. No, I didn't sell it. I packed it up and now I'm going to take it over to my friend Jan from the band Isoloscope to see what kind of sounds he makes with it. And while I'm going to be there, we're going to record a short interview and we're going to play around with his modular rack together. Let's go. I'm here with my friend Jan. We met officially in Amsterdam about five years ago, I mm -hmm. think. But I've been a fan of his music since I was a teenager. Uh, and the topic of today is distortion. So I thought it would be fun to get you involved with this because your music is nothing if not distorted. Would you mind telling the viewers <laughs> like who you are? So my name is Jan Fossurier. Uh, I'm the man behind Isoloscope. A uh, few other projects too. Namely, I've been working with Memmaker, I've Varden Sphere, had a few collaborations with other artists also. Started making music in 99, uh, so it's been a while. <laughs> I started listening to industrial and noise music, I think around 99, 2000. So yeah. you were already at it at that time. So it's not totally. surprising that you were one of the acts that I got into. Cool, well, thanks. <laughs> so one of the things that really appeals to me in mm -hmm. uh, Isoloscope mm -hmm. is this really layered, complex, textured sound. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's a really good match for the modular way of working. So mm. when did you actually start involving modular in your production process? I got jealous at one of my bandmates set up. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is how it usually starts. <laughs> oh God, when was it? Maybe almost 10 years ago now. I didn't really start really getting into modular until I would say four years ago. Yep. Um, it was a long period where I was not sure if I could do it or not. In anyways, I was moving countries. Things were happening in my life. Uh, it was not really uh, conductive for me to just start building a modular because it's a, it's a big financial investment. I like to compare a modular system as owning a car, really. So, because it's about <laughs> how much it costs. With a normal salary, it'd be, uh, with a, yeah, it would be basically a choice between one or the other, definitely. Yeah. So, and a modular is less portable than a car. Nope, you're right. <laughs> it doesn't have wheels <laughs> most of the time. I knew what I wanted right away off the bat, what kind of sounds I wanted to go with modular that were really hard to mimic with software. It was more... I know a lot of people go into modular uh, as a workflow. Yep. A lot of people are getting into my music through modular. Uh, like any other instrument, you should just uh, you should just have fun, enjoy a process with it. So I just started to get some inst some modules. Namely, what I really liked was complex oscillators. And at the time, yeah. there now there are some softwares that do it okay. But back then, it was uh, next to impossible to do something that did uh, what complex oscillators, uh, dual complex oscillators do. Uh, wave shaping. Uh, some software did it okay, but it was really in the context of a closed uh, VSTi. So yeah, I, I really wanted to get some uh, some tones, especially for for ambient backgrounds that basically sounded like two oscillators fighting for space. Yeah, that's <laughs> for harmonic space basically. That's just that's that's for me is the the real magic. Uh, that's what I figure is what I cannot do with other things in a modular system. Yeah, well at least. That's so. a great metaphor for describing the sound. So what yeah. I gather is that what drew you to modular, aside from um, gear envy, yeah. <laughs> is that you had this vision for the sounds that you wanted to get yes. that were not possible with other equipment. Yeah. It was possible, but in a very limited capacity. Okay. So if I, I, I managed to get those sounds. Uh, yeah, it's more like also a parallel workflow. Uh, like it's completely different to what I'm... I, I really like to produce with uh, DAW, like yeah. in the computer. I. A lot of people will go to modular or buy equipment, outboard equipment because they like working with something that doesn't interface with a computer. Yeah. I'm completely the other way around. It's, it's something I hear all the time, but I, I can't identify with that. I really like working inside of a, of a computer software. Yeah. I, I like the, pro the, the process of doing it. But being forced to go into the modular realm, uh, and it gets me into a different context, different headspace. I get to do experimentations and sound design that would not be uh, that would not come to me naturally with uh, with software. Yeah. So I relate to that. I I kind of first of all I don't think a soft a modular system sounds better than software. At this point we're in a we're in a point that might have been true ten years ago. Yeah. Now it's not true. Like there's software that sounds much that can sound better than modular, and there are some modules that sound like garbage also. So let's right. not. <laughs> I don't believe in too. Uh, None of these gems, too, of course. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> highly curated. Yeah, exactly. Highly curated, must uh, organically sourced. So this is interesting to me because yeah. I'm also someone uh, who used to work within the box exclusively. Mm. Yeah. And I got into modular for the reason you just uh, mentioned, which is that I wanted to to get away from that a little bit. Yeah. I wanted to get the creative juices flowing and mm. turn off the computer after mm. a long day at work. Yeah. 
But what I find challenging, mm -hmm. and what I'd like to get your perspective on, is to combine the two. Yes. So do you find that you get useful content from your work with the modular? Yes, definitely. The way I produce music, anyways, is usually I um, uh, I usually have an idea of the structure, what I want to, where to take the the track. Uh, I usually lay down a structure, like a wireframe of a structure, and uh, like a complete wireframe. There's no sounds, but just like okay, this should be the intro. This is what's what's gonna happen. This is how I vision envision yeah. it. Then the first thing I usually do is I I work on a sound with no um, nothing in mind, just just play with sounds, software or modular. And when I get somewhere that hey, I like what I'm doing here, it's different. It's like it resonates with me in a way or another. I make like I I contact I I get that sound. I I make a loop or a, I I set it into a like a repeatable context basically, yeah. and uh, I say okay, well out of this sound uh, s sound I can build the track and I usually yeah. that's usually how I make it um, now I can do this with software or modular yeah but you, more more likely than not I, I do that with the modular or the software but the modular will always get in there for for background sounds like just mm -hmm. absolutely I could like for droning like there's so much satisfaction I can get with the modular yeah I can lose myself completely yeah and it's a matter of really like just record like a session of just a noodling session for maybe 40 minutes to three hours and just take whatever I want from that and put it into a, yeah. a track in the background. Also, there's always a, there's, there's an element of surprise that I really see in yeah. the, in uh, software, especially if you work with FM, it's kind of mm -hmm. in the modular world. Like what happens is often a complete, uh, like yeah. <laughs> complete surprise, uh, like yeah. predictable surprise, but you know, <laughs> I still have trouble wrapping my head around the fact that there are people who are consciously programming FM synth. There's very few people that do it that I yeah. know, uh, but people that do it, uh, on the software level, like just think back of everybody that composed video games uh, before uh, you could have CD quality audio. It was That's all right. on all FM, all FM, all FM. Like yeah. recently, they've started redoing the FM chip that's used on the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. Yeah. There's one mass-produced box that actually has four chips basically that you can program as you want. Yeah, and where the presets are basically based on like the most iconic uh, Sega uh, sounds from that era. I've heard about this, yeah. yeah. And then there were these people who could really faithfully recreate uh, yeah. orchestral sounds and absolutely. other sound effects it's, uh, by programming FM chips. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, as far as the technology would allow you to do yeah. it. It sounds to me like you have this really strong conceptual workflow, like you mm -hmm. have a plan for the track and there's yeah. a role for this instrument in it. This is where I was getting at. My plan, my track never goes to plan. Ah. <laughs> like it yeah. has never happened once where like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I just need a plan mm -hmm. to uh, to get things started. If yeah. I have a plan, but it never worked the way I did. Or when I'm really stuck, I remember thinking, okay, well, there's this track I really like from this artist. Yeah, I'm gonna copy it completely. Uh -huh. I'm gonna make exactly the same. Yeah, and five minutes into <laughs> it, I got a completely different idea. And I know this is yeah. this is like I'm trying to fool myself into doing something. Yeah, it's just tricking myself, and then I, yeah. I get completely different. I've never, I. I've always been doing this on the purpose that I knew I was not gonna. <laughs> I've never copied anybody in, a, yeah. in that sense. But I'm just saying, if I don't have any ideas, I'll just try to copy this. Yeah. And like it, it, do, it takes literally minutes when I start and I, I got something else and I just follow that that uh, train of thought. That's very clever. So well, yeah. these are it, these are good workflow suggestions. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, it's it's a matter of tricking your your own. Uh, you know, all negative biases of how yeah. to uh, to work, basically. Yeah. I think so. the five minutes threshold seems to be important. <laughs> what yeah. what I've learned mm -hmm. in my own work is that if I do five minutes of good work right after waking up, yeah, I'm gonna have a very productive day. Really? If I don't get started, mm -hmm. then. I just won't get started all day long. So it's mm. something similar, I guess. You have to trick your brain into kicking into the yeah. flow state. Exactly. And then, yeah. yeah, as soon as you get in the flow, I just, yeah, you, you write it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you want to tell us something about the equipment that you have set up right here? Well, this big thing on top of it, uh, here is the uh, the DFAM from uh, Mo. Uh, yeah. I, I just love that name, Drummer from Another Mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's on, why guys. it's here. Guys. <laughs> well, no, the main reason is because it has uh, a completely analog sequencer. Yeah. Um, that's what got me interested into it. Yeah. Uh, just something to, to add movement, basically. Uh, then you have, uh, of course, the signature more uh, quality components, uh, which is much better than most of the, the voice uh, synthesizer, like yeah. the all-in-one stuff in the Eurorack. Uh, 
Frankly, I don't use it a lot. It's called a percussion synthesizer, but I've never used it for percussions. I've mm. always used it for rolling basses. Uh, it's like the, the TB303, like that iconic uh, okay. acid uh, bass line. Yeah. Uh, it was meant to do something quite different, and it became popular in its own because it was doing it so badly. Yeah. I think this doesn't do anything badly, but as far as percussive <laughs> synth goes, it's not the best. It's uh, the best yeah. at... Everything that uh, spills over that, though, yeah, it does it really well. But again, this is probably the module I use the least. I've, I haven't used it in a couple of months, but uh, it saved my bacon a few times with when I was just out of ideas and I just yeah. uh, needed something to get a little groove running. Yeah, started patching that, and almost immediately I got something interesting out of it. Okay, um, and then you do have the best drum synth right below it, right? I just this is one of my <laughs> most recent uh, acquisitions. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I was more curious about the IntelliGel Plunk. Uh, okay. Someone convinced me. My concern is I've already tried some noise engineering things in store, and I was not super impressed. Uh, a lot of people seem to really like it, and mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I get it. But what I was looking for, the sounds, I was like, uh, I'm, yeah, I didn't, I didn't click to it. Mm -hmm. But it's very likely that what happened is that I was in a busy store, yeah, and I got distracted by what was going on, and I didn't really enjoy the, the process so yeah. I didn't want to give this one a shot because that one was readily available in stores the the plunk was not for uh, at that yeah. time so I thought well maybe if I don't like this one I'll just send it back and get a plunk yeah uh, yeah and I got completely surprised again uh, it's a pretty good drum synth but that's not where it shines it's when you exactly like the the defam it's yeah. uh, it's where it spills over that it does it nicely. And it's cool that it's FM, you know, you mentioned FM yeah. um, before, like, yeah. I really like the otherworldly sounds that mm. these FM drum synths um, produce. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's my baby here. The the Schwemann uh, oh, Monsieur 2RM. Yeah. This is what, this is why I wanted to go uh, modular, this specific oscillator. Really? Um, friend of mine, actually Scott from my Varden Sphere. Yeah. Who, uh, who brought his modular rig in my house? I think it was the last kinetic. Like, it was years ago, uh, festival in Montreal. We uh, he just plugged his um, little modular case, in, uh, in my sound system, in my uh, in my studio, and we just started noodling. And I started noodling with this, and this is when I realized I could that that sound. I started to look for it. Yeah. First time I heard it was coming from this little thing. Yeah. Just two oscillators fighting for a uh, common space that are slightly out of tune. Yeah. Holy crap! Yeah. If it's a sustained note and there's nothing getting in between. Um, this one, I think, does it exceptionally well. Uh, yeah. It's also really exceptionally expensive, simply for the <laughs> fact that they're all handmade and there's a lot of people that have uh, completely fetishized the Schwemann uh, yeah. brand. True. Um, I've often seen this one go online for sale between 1,000 euros and 2,500 euros. Uh, it is not a 2,500 euro oscillator. It is not a 1,000 <laughs> euro oscillator. It's not worth that money. Absolutely. Hmm. I basically got in touch with Schwemann and asked them, when are you going to do a next batch? Yeah. Please put me in the line. I'll pay the MSRP, but I will not pay a scalper's price for it. That's yeah. for sure. Fair enough. Took a few years, but they finally got to it, and yeah. I got it. So You're lucky, because he I'm passed patient. away recently. Yeah, oh yeah. As far as I know, he was not the one building them at that point. He was just okay. designing them. But yeah, yeah. He, you're, it's true. He passed away just a few uh, months ago. Yeah. Um, Exceptional workmanship, though. absolutely, really like, great uh, design. And they started really early in the in, uh, in the first resurgence of modular. I think like when people started to get really disappointed by digital synths at the end of the nineties. Yeah. From what I gather, like it started with the, the really the idea of uh, let's just use all the most the highest quality components instead of what was the trend back then was like how can we make this cheaper basically, yeah. which had its place, um, but. Yeah, the the context was very different in the late nineties. Yeah, of, uh, for sure. Sizers. Yeah. So, but yeah, this this is exceptional. Uh, it sounds exceptionally well. I yeah. really, really love that oscillator. Uh, uh, this is like if my house is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna. I'm insured. <laughs> so that's why it's at the heart of your setup. Absolutely. Also, yeah. it's got okay. that striking green gray color. So yeah. It's. I like to color coordinate my stuff, as you can see. So. Oh, uh, that's it right. Fits, it fits yeah. well. Like I got a little few holes here because I uh, got some stuff on uh, order. Uh, I'm waiting for uh, for oh. a few things. Well, I have something that might fill this up I, nicely. I'm literally certain it will fit. It will fit exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but first, I wanna I wanna hear you out about yeah. the rest of this setup. Sure. Um, so that's sound sources. What else yeah. have we got? Sound sources. There's the liquid glitcher by uh, Air Instruments. Uh, holy crap, that thing is fun. Yeah. Like, 
Uh, also, support our local guys, Paul Toss, uh, yeah. is building these. Uh, it's one of those one-trick ponies, yeah. but holy fuck is it a good trick. Yeah. <laughs> and holy crap is it a good pony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, uh, actually, this is the uh, maybe the single module I've used the most in the last two months. And every track I've produced in the last... Uh, few months I uh, threw in some of it and That's I can't great. say it's true for anything else uh, except yeah. for that one. And what are your favorite um, CV sources like for modulating other stuff? No hesitation. The Batumi is so much fun. Yeah. The, um, the Batumi with the uh, Pamela's new workout, I, I couldn't work with other Pamela's new workout. This is the second one I buy actually. I just, um, working entirely from, coming from working entirely from computer, uh, computers, I did not realize that, um, uh, BPM clock drift was a sh such a thing. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, because I just never had a situation. All my sequences always came out from my DAW. Perfect. Then I was letting this one go, and I recorded, and then after a few bars, I realized it was slightly out of line. And I'm like, there must be something wrong with my uh, mm. Pam's new workout because a second is a second, especially if you have a, qu a quartz counter. Yeah. But yeah, apparently the tolerance in uh, musical equipment is um, a bit ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I got rid of it thinking like, not that I had a faulty unit, but yeah, it was a bit, I thought it was a bit sloppy, basically. Mm. So I got rid of it, and then I realized it's not my Pamela's new workout, it's just really the tolerance, yeah, the normal tolerance. And I missed it immediately, so if I need help uh, resetting the clock to yeah. stay in before it's noticeable, I just send a pulse from uh, my expert sleepers, which okay. are connected directly to my DW. Yeah. Send a pulse every 16 measures, for instance, and takes care of it it's yeah. on it's on uh, noticeable but smart i got this quadrex that's my other i, I really got my uh, modulation sources in one corner uh-huh it's a quadruple envelope but there's different modes for the envelopes and you can cycle them I you bet. can cycle definitely yeah. there's a there's a extension to make it pingable also yeah uh, so you have the end of each uh the, the the rise and fall yeah i have not gotten that yet um it might be interesting to have a pingable env envelope down the line but not for what uh, I'm looking for right now. Yeah. Honestly, um, I have not used it enough. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Like I've I've played with it plenty. Yeah. But I have not made patches. I I know like I have not made patches that would require me to use it yet. Uh, I have some patches in mind I will do in the future for sure. But I have not enjoyed this one in this company yet. And in terms of processing yeah. uh, the sounds, you mentioned that you do a lot of that still in the box. Absolutely. That's yeah. one of the reasons we're talking, because yeah. I, I got something I would like you to try out. All right. But yeah. what do you have already in your rack uh, that you use for processing the, the audio? Uh, let's start with uh, the VCA Wave Shaper Ring Mod yeah. by Eureka. Uh, that one's interesting. It's basically a very tame, I would say, a Wave Shaper. Mm -hmm. I was expecting something a little more... Um, more aggressive. The street spots are really nice in it. It's not what I expected when I yeah. got it. I played with it at first. I was like, huh, that's not, yeah, that is not what I expected. But that being said, it really has its place in my uh, in my rack. Also, it's two extra VCAs. Yeah. There's a nice ring mod that actually sounds pretty good. And what are these? Uh, these, uh, you might know a thing or two about <laughs> these. <laughs> these are vacuum tubes, you oh, see. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, there is definitely two vacuum creation. You can go on overdrive on, yeah. on it. What else for effects? Love this one. Uh, the Z-Plane by Morpheus. Uh, completely digital uh, filter, but it goes into a weird self-oscillating uh, comb filtering. Nice. And I I spent a whole afternoon working with this. I, I'm barely scratching the surface. I printed yeah. out the manual. It's somewhere <laughs> in my stuff. I need to spend at least a day or two just figuring this thing out. Yeah. Good thing it has is it has presets, which is unusual for uh, the modular world. But basically, I don't know how. I don't remember how big the bank is, but I could go through all. There's hundreds of different modes of running it. Wow! So you can basically pick and choose the ones you really like and yep. are more likely to use, and make a, your own piece of banks, which is. How do you uh, feel about that? Because for like for me, I always feel like modules that are too complex. Yeah. Take away a little bit from the fun for me. Yes. How do you feel about that? I agree with that. I got rid of a few modules because there was menu diving involved. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it has presets is what saves this okay um like i said i i've had this for about a month now and i have not really used it because mm. of that so that's something to keep in mind yeah but i really want to make a pre uh my own preset banks if i narrow down to all the choices i have and make really a narrow amount of choices that yeah. i can use it for then it'll become interesting for me i get it. but 
this is gonna take a while for me to integrate into my workflow properly. Yeah. I already ordered a uh, piston Honda ah, Mark III. Uh, yeah. A long time, like I've ordered it months ago. It's just still in buck order. I just yeah. uh, so as soon as I get it, it's going right here. It's another yes. one that has menus and I've, I've heard that thing in action and I really like how it sounds. So I'm probably, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it for sure. But again, I really hope it has, uh, I, I don't get lost in the menu because again, yeah. I got rid of a lot of modules because they sounded great, but the menu diving just uh, defies the purpose a bit of having a, yeah. a module system, especially if I'm going to work in the computer also. Also effects, what else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the I guess the uh, worth mentioning, uh, Monotropa from Reverse Landfill. Uh, it's a resonant uh, equ equalizer with really nice overdrive. Well, overdrive. Yeah. Because the feedback, it's basically the, the dis it's a distortion unit and it does based on um, uh, on uh, on feedback. It's that's nice. Sounds that's surprisingly sound. hefty. Um, yeah. It was cheap and fun, and I like it because it's cheap and fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it that way. Yeah. And right under it is its big brother. This is brand new. Uh, uh, my friend Bauke built that for me, actually. It was a kit. Uh, yeah. I'm not... Uh, I can fix a few things myself. I got, like, my little soldering kit. But putting a whole kit together is not... Uh, I, you know, it's... And you're one of the few people in this world who are actually productive. Yeah. With modular synthesis. <laughs> that is a thing, yes. So uh, please don't waste your time <laughs> building kits. Exactly. There's just so much time. There's just 24 hours in a day. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, but but tell me about it. What what does it do for you? It does not wash my dishes. Yeah. It does not uh, tuck me into bed. But what it does, it does really well. <laughs> it's uh, basically it's a it's a uh, it's a fixed equalizer. I don't know if you can see with the camera, but at the bottom here you have the frequency each of the knobs represent. There's an entire feedback circuit where the the feedback can go in every one of these bands. That distortion is really unique. It I sounds bet. really specific. The fact that you're stuck on and you have no control over the uh, which frequencies it goes through. It like it's like it forces a scale into something that could be scaled differently. Yeah. Which is musically uh, depends on what you're looking for, but it's either musically extremely annoying, or <laughs> extremely uh, uh, compelling. Com yeah, compelling. That'd be a good word. Yeah. Exactly. But these are my uh, <clears throat> effects processors. Yeah. Now I brought you something. Yes, uh, so I heard. Because we had yeah. a discussion about yes. distortion mm -hmm. and whether to do it out of the box or in the box. Mm -hmm. And what got me started on Eurorack DIY yeah. is building the Plankton Electronics New Tone. Yes. Which is an amazing distortion. I, right. I've been on a, I guess, buying spree, looking for yes. the perfect distortion. I, Sold uh, all of that. them, okay. except for this one. Oh. It just has an exceptional tone with this really rewarding sound you know like when i listen to old industrial tracks i just want to feel get this a, get that little sense of reward i'm already tingling yeah. my fingers here <laughs> and i think the way they achieve this is by combining tube amplification mm -hmm. with feedback yeah which is a really nice combination mm -hmm. and they make use of this uh cork new tube mm -hmm. circuit um, which is a chip with two uh, triodes on it yes it's very energy efficient lasts a lifetime mm -hmm. but it sounds just like a tube and I brought you one. Yeah, okay. I brought you mine, which is Whoa. my favorite module. All right, so. <laughs> but I think it will have a good time um, with a sleepover at your place, <laughs> being involved in some patches. Exactly, I'll make sure he brushes his teeth, don't worry. So I built this myself and then right. packaged it up nicely for you. Damn. And here you go. Right. Okay, damn, let's look at this. It's oh. a really nice design. Like every yeah. part of it is super nicely designed. Check it out. <laughs> You can bias the triodes just like That's with your this uh, is a shape ring mod. CV. So basically, yeah. uh, if a CV is not plugged into it, this is the bias, right? That's right. And okay. CV is added to the bias settings of this. Okay. So it's so not just normal, it's merged. Okay. And then um, it has two channels, yep. which you can link together with these uh, knobs. So you can yep. send out one mm -hmm. to input two, which chains them in series. And you can send out two to input one, which creates feedback. Yes. And then I you see. have separate feedback controls. So you have the control uh, for both. on top of that yeah. you have control over the yeah. feedback. So it can get really gnarly. Now. All right, that's gnarl. Oh I like the color too. It's nice. Hi, sir. Yeah. I'm just really impressed with how well designed every aspect of this is. I haven't asked Alex who makes these, yeah. but I bet that he was a designer before. Or he has a natural knack for it. Or he paid someone. <laughs> also. Alright, so let's just go 
You can uh, take out two, for yep. example, and they're... Uh -huh. it it's, yeah, it sounds like a, like a pulsy feedback. There we go. Yeah. It sounds exactly like old Roland mixers that you can patch the aux through. It's a nice one. Yes. <laughs> nice, huh? You can Very tune good. these as well with the signal coming yeah. in. FM sound. Yeah, you hear that actually. metallic quality? Let's get a little louder. Louder! up at 11, so uh, that's satisfying, right?
Here we have a pulse on the LFO controlling the clock. Where this, this thing has basically two source, sound sources that are uh, wrestling with each other. Yeah. And it uses an LFO to divide it. And then you can play them how it's divided by uh, these uh, pulse dividers here. Nice. See, from 2, 4, 32, yeah. 128, 512, all the way to uh, 2848. Okay. So, yeah, that's uh, clock dividing Ahoy in this one. Yeah. So it just switch from this one to this one. Yeah. Um, and then you were attenuating that here? Yeah, just to lower the volume. Setting but it to one of the inputs? Exactly, but I didn't realize the kind of control you had here yet. Yeah, uh, yeah. I turned I turned this down a little bit yeah. because they were cross, like, interfering, like, yeah, bleeding definitely. into both channels. Mm -hmm. So we reduced that. And then the second sound source was... What do you mean? Like the, the first one that the went into The first one was the 2RM, yeah, yeah. my, uh, my fetish... Uh, <laughs> Finishized yeah. equipment, piece of equipment. Uh, another uh, oscillator I love and I, I bought a lot of oscillators and got rid of a lot of them, hmm. but one that I keep is the DPO, another yeah. complex oscillator. This one yeah. is from... Uh, it's it's Make Noise, right? Make Noise, yes. Yeah. yes. It's blanking here. Nice. Uh, okay, hold on. What am I doing? Oh yeah, here. Explaining <laughs> to us uh, what, what the yeah. patch was. Exactly, yeah. let's just put it back into the audio. Well, let's, let's add the DPO in there. Okay. thing despite how much I have here I try to keep it as simple as possible like I yeah. really want a maximum satisfaction out of a minimum amount of effort yeah it's really yeah. impressive to see you at work because you produce a super usable <laughs> sound out of this in no yeah. time so what are your yeah. first thoughts about the new tone it's well done uh, the limited amount of dedicated distortion uh, modules that I that I bought 
Uh, I ended up usually getting rid of it because they had uh, like a serious flaw that I found basically from uh, yeah. a work for, a, either a, a workflow flaw or something in the audio just didn't work for me. Uh, but this, this is different because of the feedback, because of the, yeah. the modulations. And um, the triodes. I mean, that's, okay, that's an sexy analog well. component that, that is, is hard so to replicate. Sexy. How does it... Uh, it looks like it's phosphorescent, though. Yeah, is it? it is. I mean, all triodes should light up a little bit. Yeah. Um, the more like, the more uh, signal is sent through it, yeah. the dimmer I they get. Oh, so it's the opposite. Okay. Yeah, and then there's a small LED that illuminates yeah. the panel from the side. All right, let's, uh, let's play with yeah, that thing. I'm curious to hear that. It self-oscillates because of the uh, feedback. So how about, let me just unpatch nice. all this so yeah. we're not... That's that same kind of, yeah, self-oscillating. How about sound. we play with self-oscillation and self-oscillation? Also, maybe some self-oscillation. Because yo, dog, <laughs> I heard you like self-oscillation. <laughs> All right. So yeah, let's go Yep. in there. Actually, let's run it through this filter. Mm -hmm. through the ring with this thing. Okay. Jitterbug. That's a window rattling. 